Welcome to another edition of the Go Knows Podcast. I'm your host, Gregory McCoy. This podcast is by a fan for fans. I am not a journalist. I am not a reporter. I am not an insider. I do not work for a website. The majority of my content comes from me, in my opinion. Other information comes from the internet. Today is February 12th, 2020. Um, I got about five different segments here for this episode. I hope you enjoy it. First segment is entitled Super Bowl Window versus CFP Window. Which closes? Which closes faster? And here's what I wrote about that. Super Bowl Window versus CFP window which closes faster I think it varies from team to team for example Clemson's window will be open for a while because they get elite talent and they play an easy schedule and they are in the ACC which is a cakewalk to the college football playoff Alabama on the other hand is in the toughest division of college football their window might be closed um with the addition of Lane Kiffin and Mike Leach to Ole Miss and Mississippi State, that division only got harder. So Alabama might have one loss or two losses and might not make it to the college football playoff. Um, in the NFL, um, the New England Patriots are the only team to beat the salary cap. Um, Tom Brady was taking cap friendly deals his whole career and thus that's how the uh, New England Patriots were able to beat the salary cap era um, those days are over um, Tom Brady looks like he's going to the Los Angeles Chargers um, so I believe that the New England Patriots window has closed unless they find another quarterback, you know, that might be somewhat on the level of a Tom Brady. Uh, Kansas City Chiefs, their window might be closing if they pay Patrick Mahomes $40 million a year, which is what everyone is saying. Um, with Mahomes taking up basically a third of the cap, you won't have the ability to sign anyone else. Um, so I have to say that the uh, the window that closes the fastest is definitely the Super Bowl window um, because of the salary cap. The salary cap is the ultimate equalizer really in sports. Um, I don't like it. I feel like if your organization goes out and scouts talent and finds talent, cultivates that talent, you should be able to keep it without penalty. Um, like baseball. Right? Um, so let me know what you think about that segment. Um, let's move on to the next segment. Which is entitled, Salary Cap or No Cap and the most a player can make is $40 million max salary. And here's what I wrote about that. Salary cap or no cap? Um, $40 million max salary. The cap was created to stop dynasties and save the owner's money. It really cripples a team that has a lot of talent. Um, you have to hit on all your draft picks now. Uh, teams can't afford to take flyers on guys um, anymore. Needless to say, I hate the salary cap. It does what it's supposed to do, though. No cap. No cap. I love this. Um, we know no cap. I love this. We know the owners have the money to pay players. They're billionaires. Most people. Um, would um, most people would be fine with no cap, um, because they would say that. Well, most people might have a problem with no cap because they would think that the uh, the big time players would go to the big time market. So my idea to offset that would be to give the smaller market teams the ability to pay more money to keep their players versus the big time markets and vice versa for 
the big time markets. If they draft a player and they want to keep that player, they can pay more money to keep their talent. Um, so, and, and basically with doing this system, you would be able to negotiate the max salary every, I don't know, five years. Just so um, the salary can increase with, you know, the prosperity of the league financially. Pretty much what they do now. Um, but I really don't like the salary cap at all. <laughs> um, and that's what the first two segments were basically the same. But they were kind of different because the one was... Super Bowl window and the other one was salary cap. So but they were kind of similar also. So let me know what you think about this last segment. And I'm gonna move on to the next segment, which is entitled. If time tra if time travel was possible and you could go back and see any Florida State game, which one would you pick? Alright, and here's what I wrote about that. If time travel if time travel was possible and you could go back and see any Florida State game live and in person, I would go to the 1996 Sugar Bowl against the Florida Gators. Um, that game lives in my mind forever. Um, I replay it at least once a month. Um, I would cheat, I'll admit it, so Florida State could get the win. Um, I hate the fact that they blew us out like that. And won the national championship. Um, I might just go to another game out of spite against the Gators, 06 and 08, and sabotage their national championship wins. Um, I know that's petty, but who cares? Um, I hate Tebow, the quarterback. I like Tebow, the person. Um, I would tell the defensive coordinator to blitz Tebow the whole game because we all know he can't handle the blitz. Um, once he gets under pressure, he throws interceptions. Um, <laughs> this segment morphed into a Gators rant, and there's a reason for that. Um, it is what it is. I can't help it. I'll tell you the reason for that rant at the end of this segment. Um the I don't know what day it was. I wanna I'm guessing February seventh or February eighth. This Gator fan and I, I take pride in what he did or I like what he did. He gave me a one star on a rating. You know what that means? That means I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Aggravating Gators fans. I would have been more mad if he would have gave me five stars. But he gave me a one star and he said, go Gators. But he wasn't man enough to put his name on it. He put his little, uh, I don't know, gamer tag or, you know, Apple ID on there. No, you know, I guess I'm the only person in the Apple community who uses their real names when they do um, reviews. But he gave me one star and he said, go Gators. I mean, I, I thought it was pretty funny. So, um, every chance I get, I'm going to get at those Gators. And, you know, to all the Florida State fans that listen to this podcast, we cannot let a Gators fan sabotage anything Florida State. So, I'm calling on you guys to help me out with uh, reviews. Um, so, that's the end of that segment. I'm going to move on to the next segment. Which is entitled Father and Son Players at Florida State. How do you feel about them? Now, obviously, they didn't play at the same time, but you've had players in the past now that have sons that have played either a couple of years ago or are going to play for um, Florida State. And here's what I wrote about that. For father and son players at Florida State, like or dislike? I like it if the father and son players were good. It really doesn't matter to me that they are related. Um, 
you know, I want Florida State to get the best players, regardless of relation. Um, this segment comes after I read that the uh, linebacker, uh, Brandon Jennings from Jacksonville, has committed committed to Florida State, son of Bradley Jennings uh, from the 99 National Championship team. Um, Florida State has se several other father-son combos. Derek and DeKalen Brooks, Charlie Ward and Caleb Ward, Ward uh, Mario Edwards Jr. and Sr. Um, so hopefully Brandon Jennings can be a great player for Florida State. Um, I forgot Stanford Samuels uh, second and third. Uh, neither one of them were great at Florida State. Um, um, you know, my opinion, like I said at the beginning of this segment, is still the same. As long as they can play, I really don't. It really doesn't matter to me if they're father and son. Um, all that matters is winning and looking good while doing it. Um, the best father and son combo thus far was, would, I think it would have to be Mario Edwards Jr. and Sr. Um, both of those guys were all ACC. So I think they're the best thus far. And uh, let me know who you think was the best father and son combo at Florida State. Um, so that's going to end that segment. I'm going to move on to the next segment. Um which is entitled, Will I Invest in a PlayStation 5 with no college football video game in sight? And here's what I wrote about that. Um, will I invest in a PlayStation 5 with no college football video game in sight? I probably will buy it. I really hate Ed O'Bannon. He messed up a great thing for the fans. I uh, had a whole ritual when the college football video game was about to come out each year. And now all of that's done. I really hope one day that the NCAA and its players can settle this image and likeness nonsense so we can get the game back. It was one of the reasons I bought um, a gaming console in the first place. Um, it would be crazy to see the game in 4K. Um, I'm a PlayStation guy. I never considered getting an Xbox. But maybe if one of these indie developers make a college football video game, I might think about it. All right, I've been playing NCAA 14 for the last seven years, and you know, no matter what I put the settings on, I just dominate now. So I pretty much know every move the computer is gonna make. So it's just I just hate that image and likeness is what took the game out. And the two players that made this happen, Sam Keller, who, who did nothing after he left Arizona or Nebraska, whichever place he was at last, he didn't do anything. He didn't even make it to the league. He, he's suing because his image and likeness was used. But you was probably getting money from some booster at those two programs when you're there anyway. And we know Ed O'Bannon was getting money from boosters at UCLA, come on, that was that's a blue blood program. And at the end of the day, you didn't what did you what did you resolve? You just stopped millions of people from playing a game. And you didn't stop the NCAA from making money. They still making billions. They're making billions. And they still using kids' image and likeness. And they're gonna continue to do it. So I, I really didn't get, um, you know, why they did that, why he did that. I thought it was basically, you know, his his likeness and image was used in March Madness, the old uh, EA college basketball game. But come on, man. It wasn't like you was the cover athlete of the game. So, you know, I've, we've seen commercials and little hints here and there, the little uh, life support thing on the Internet for the uh, football game. So hopefully it can come back, man. All right. Let me know if you want the game to come back in the comments. 
Um, that's going to conclude this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. It's available on YouTube, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify Podcasts. If you're listening to this on YouTube, please scroll down to the description. Click on one of the links. Rate, review, and subscribe. Please don't let the Gators fans take over my comments and reviews. Okay? And as always, go Knowles.